campaign and travel the entire globe to try and advocate for refugee rights and women's rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're also a young woman. <laughs> How do you do this? It's amazing to me. Uh, to be honest, uh, this means so much to me and uh, I'm so proud about it. Uh, of course, I try to manage between my studies and my activities. Uh, I try to reach uh, people as much as I can, especially those people who could help refugees, could help children to have access to their fundamental right of education, to have access to a quality education, not only education. So it is important to push governments, to push people who have the ability to really help uh, children all over the world to have access to quality education. So this is uh, one of the main things that I do with UNICEF. I try to also give uh, a hope to people who can uh, learn from my story, how we can face the challenges once we have opportunity. If we didn't give up, we can really do something, not only to ourselves, but for everyone. Uh, and we can make a huge difference and the positive impact, not only hearing uh, sufferings and negative things about refugees or people who suffered in their lives, but we can learn hope. And once we face those challenges, we can teach those people, even who don't suffer, what hope means. And that's what I really focus on. And of course, uh, girls education is one of the main top uh, goals in my life, to see girls in great positions and effective in their communities and to be leaders. Not only old women uh, as well, but also young women can do something. We learn, of course, from the story of Malala. And I hope my story is also a great contribution to young women to learn from how we can uh, really be successful and to prove to everyone that women can play a fundamental and a great role in their communities and in their uh, societies. Now, uh, you and Malala Yousafzai, Nobel Peace Prize winner, are friends. Yes. In fact, you were there at the ceremony when she was receiving her Nobel mm -hmm. Peace Prize. Um, you are Muslim women who wear the hijab, the headscarf. Mm -hmm. You are very visible and you draw attention from both sides, from those who say women should not be doing this sort of thing and those who say, ha, women, we don't take them very seriously. How do you react to the backlash both from uh, strict Islamic communities but also the Western world that might not understand or listen or take a woman with a hijab seriously? Mm -hmm. I would like to answer them to be aware that there is a huge difference between a culture and a religion. Some people misunderstand our religion just because they judge our cultures and they understand our culture is uh, teachings from our religion. I would like to tell them that we learned from Islam how to be educated people. Uh, the first word uh, was, uh, is of course in Quran, which was uh, uh, taught to our Prophet Muhammad is Iqra, which means read. And it wasn't Iqra to men, but it was uh, for both genders, for women and women, uh, men and women to be educated because you cannot learn about Islam if you are not educated. You have to know your religion and Islam needs you to be able to read, to be uh, able to write, to analyze and to understand. And Islam, uh, the religion that encourages both genders to be educated. So I would uh, like them to know, uh, to know the difference between a culture that restricts women and the religion that gives women the opportunity to be educated. What is uh, the one thing, Mazoon, that you wish the general public would understand about refugees? I would uh, them to know that uh, refugees are not only statistics or numbers, they are human beings. They, each number has a story behind it and uh, I want them to know the real sufferings, not only to listen to news or media and just judge on refugees through that. So I would uh, encourage them all to hear from refugees, not to hear about refugees. Now you specifically focus on education within the refugee communities and, and, and groups all around the world. Why is education such an important part of your, of your campaign work? Definitely because education gives hope and education can change our life and if we have challenges we cannot solve it without education. So education is the only solution that could give us the hope and the future at the same time. Once I face those challenges by education I can prove to everyone that I am not uh, helpless and I can be a hard number, not an easy number. So I can uh, create a great life for myself and also create a great life for others. And also I can participate in rebuilding my homeland in the future with a strong generation. All around Europe and America, there is a very strong 
a group that, that don't welcome refugees, that believe that actually we are a burden to society and communities, um, and that in fact we are overflowing uh, those communities. They're afraid that their culture is being attacked and hijacked by refugees. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? I would like to say that refugees trusted those countries and they didn't ask to come to those countries for no reason. They just came because they uh, had difficult circumstances that forced them to flee their homelands. I am one of those people who I didn't want to flee my home and they will never ever think that they will leave Syria uh, only just for a holiday if I want to leave Syria or I d if I want to leave it for a short time. But I fled Syria because I had really difficult circumstances. I had war. I had had bumpings above me, I had fightings all around us. Um, many people lost their basic rights, no education, no electricity sometimes in, in, uh, in Syria during the war. So it was a really hard situation. That's why we needed to flee. And they know that uh, everyone loves uh, his or her homeland. And uh, for me, if uh, Syria is better than uh, what it was during these nine years, and if it will be peaceful, mm -hmm. and if we will have good life, I will go back to Syria today before tomorrow. That's why I want to tell them refugees when never leave their homelands if they have good life. So they just fled because they felt they needed somebody to help them, a country to give them safety, to give them security, to give them access to their rights, especially their right to live in peace and to have education and the, the, uh, the refugees specifically um, except the people who are staying their homelands they need hope they are hopeful people who look to better opportunities not to bad opportunities why so is that the responsibility of the west why is that the responsibility of europe i don't think so it is just the responsibility of the west or europe it is the responsibility for all of us uh, even in the level of individuals we all can contribute because one country for example cannot do anything or one person cannot do a huge difference i know they can participate like for uh, for myself my voice my message can contribute a little bit but i need more contribution from people individuals and also countries to come together and to for uh, to put our differences aside and come just to make peace for all of us because peace is not only for one country or for one person it is universal what do you find really frustrating about your activism role and what do you find really rewarding? I think there is nothing. Uh, I, uh, I, I just keep going. I do as much as I can. And at the end, it is a message. People can uh, accept it or reject it. That's up to them. But I feel it is my responsibility to tell them. So if they know, now it is their choice. I leave it to them once I told them. Once you deliver the message, it is up to the person or to the organization or anyone to do something. So if you are a human being and if, uh, if you think about the humanity as uh, something universal or something makes us united rather uh, than divided, then you will do and help if you can, of course. But if you think about yourself and you don't care about others, of course, you will not do anything. Uh, just before we finish, um, what was I want to know what was what was your journey like? What, what was the hardest day for you when when, when you ha had to leave? Uh, to be honest, everything was really hard to flee my home, to leave my friends and my relatives, my uh, you know normal life behind, just because the war and to seek safety in somewhere else and unknown place. So it was the hardest decision in my life. Of course, I didn't want to flee. Even the situation was really tough and it forced us to flee, but I didn't want to do so. Like I, I was so sad, I was crying. Of course, my family felt the same. All of us w didn't want to flee Syria and we still, of course, miss Syria and we will miss it forever. But at the same time, sometimes you have to go for a better life if you, in order to do something for your country. For example, for me, even if I don't live in Syria, but Syria still lives in me and Syria is a fundamental part of my life. My childhood was there. It is my country. It is my identity where I was raised. So it's the way that 
you know, I was made to be honest, but at the same time, I have to do something to Syria. I don't only want to feel sad and they want to show those emotions by actions. Of course, many people say, I love my country, I love Syria, I love this and that, but at the same time, love doesn't make everything. You have to show your love by actions. And that's why I want to see educated generation, a strong generation who could come back to Syria one day, hopefully with uh, hopeful people and do and help Syria. Mazin, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.